All right, this is part two on the study of the ellipse. All right, so x squared over 16 plus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. Uh, first thing we want to note is what's the center? So the center would be the origin, 0, 0. Now the center is not part of your graph. We're just making note where the center is at. Because from the center, that's how we're going to get to the vertices for the major axis. First question we want to ask ourselves is this one going to have a horizontal? Um, major axis or a vertical major axis? Well, since the larger number, 16, is under the x squared, you're going to have a horizontal major axis. So from the center, you want to go out whatever your a value is, so to speak. Really what that boils down to is whatever the square root of this number is. Well, the square root of 16 is 4. So you want to go out 4 spots, 2, 3, 4, and plot a point. And then go out left of the center, and 4 spots, and plot another point. Those are the coordinates, in this case, those are the coordinates for your vertices. So that would be negative 4, 0, and 4, 0. And then to get to the, the endpoints for the minor axis, since the smaller numbers are under the y squared, so we go up and down from the center, we go out whatever the square root of that is. So that would be 2. So square root of 4 would be 2. So you go out, there you go. And there you go. And those are the four points we need. Then you just make it look like an ellipse. Right, so it's very similar to graph in a circle, only you're just elongating it a little bit. Okay, so there's the graph. Now we want to figure out what the foci are. Well, to figure out the foci, we need to find c. Right? So we note that c squared is equal to the bigger number minus the smaller number. Well, the bigger number is 16, smaller number is 4, and so c squared is equal to 12, which means that c is equal to the square root of 12. Everybody with me on that? Because we, we want c to be a positive number here, so it's the square root of 12. So then to get the foci, well, the foci would be located where? Well, they'd be located here somewhere, and over here somewhere, right? Because they're on the major axis. So we're going to be adding and subtracting to the x part of the center, right? So since it's 0 there, we're going to go 0 minus the square root of 12, so that would be negative square root of 12, comma, 0, right? All we're doing is adding to this x value right here. And the other one would be 0 plus the square root of 12, which is 12, and the y value stays 0. So that's where the two foci would be. And let's try one where the center is not at the origin. All right, so we have x minus 1 squared over 4 plus y plus 2 squared all over 9 is equal to 1. Make note it's always equal to 1, and we always have a plus. It's always x squared plus y squared, or y squared plus x squared, something like that. It's not a minus, because if it's a minus, then it's a different conic section, which we will deal with next time. So here we see the center would be 1, comma, negative 2. All right, then from that point, we want to go up, down, left, and right, whatever we need to go. Right? Well, since 4 is under the x value here, we want to go right and left the square root of 4, so we want to go two units. So 1, 2 units to the right, and 1, 2 units to the left. Right? So these two points come from the fact that we've got 4 underneath the x squared term. Then up and down from the center, we want to go the square root of 9, so that would be 3. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3 and then down, one, two, three. And those are our four points that we want, and we can sketch our graph. Remember, we're just going for a sketch. We're not trying to be absolutely perfect. But it does not look like this. That is not an ellipse, so don't be sketching that out. All right, so the vertices. All right, what would the vertices be this time? Everybody agree we have a vertical major axis. Right? Because the bigger number 9 was under the y squared part. So the vertices would be 1, comma what? Okay. What's this point right here? 1. And 1, comma, 1, 2, 3, so negative 5. Right? See that? From the center, we went up. So from the point 1, negative 2, we went up 3. So that puts you at 1, 1. And then we went down 3, which puts you at 1, negative 5. Then the, to find the foci, find c. Right, so c squared equals bigger number <coughs> minus smaller number. So 9 minus 4, which equals 5. So c is equal to the square root of 5. Therefore, the foci would be what? Well, this time we're going to add the c value to which part of the center? To the y part, because it's the y part 
is, uh, is what's changing to get to the foci because of a vertical major axis. So 1 comma, and I'll just write it this way, negative 2 plus the square root of 5 and 1 comma negative 2 minus the square root of 5. So that's where the foci are located. All right, so let's do one more example, but this time uh, let's have it be so that the equation is not already in standard form. So we want to find the standard form for the ellipse and then find all the information that we we're looking for. All right, so in order to do this, we're going to do just like we did with the parabola. We're going to have to complete the square. But this time we've got an x squared and a y squared, so we're going to end up completing the square twice, once for the x's and once for the y's. All right, so we're going to group all the x's together first, so 9x squared minus 18x, and then group the y's, so you have plus 16y squared plus 64y, and let's add 71 to both sides. Move that. We want to move the constant term uh, and get it over to the right side there. And now to complete the square on these x's, so remember when completing the square, we need this leading coefficient, the coefficient of the squared term here, to be a 1. Right? Well, you can't just divide everything by that 9 because that's going to screw up the y squared term. You'd have 16 over 9. So dividing by the coefficient is not the way to uh, take care of our dilemma right now. Uh, instead, we're going to factor out that coefficient from the first two terms from the x's here. So we'd have 9 and then times x squared minus 2x. Everybody see that? All right, we're going to do the same thing with the y's. So plus 16, we're going to factor that 16 out. So we'd have y squared plus 4y, right, and then equals 71. All right, so all we do is just rewrite, uh, rewrite the expression. All right, now we want to complete the square inside the parentheses. We want to complete the square. So what do we have to add? to complete the square. Well, 1 half times 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1, so we're going to add in a 1. But we really didn't add 1, right? We really added 9. right? So uh, over here on this side, we have to add another 9, right, in order to keep the balance going, right? We really added 9. Whatever you put in here, you got to multiply whatever you have out in front, and that's really what you added to that left side, and you got to add the same thing to the right side, right? So same idea here. So 16 times y squared plus 4y. So what are we going to add? Well, 1 half times 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4, so plus 4. But we really didn't add 4. We added 4 times 16, which is 64. All right, so now uh, this is going to factor. So we have 9 times x minus 1 squared plus 16 times y plus 2 squared is equal to 144. That's the whole reason why we completed the square, was to make this a perfect squared trinomial, so it will factor into a binomial squared. All right, so remember our standard form has, has a 1 on this side, right? So what do we have to do to both sides in order to make this a 1? Well, you got to divide both sides by 144. All right, so 9 times x minus 1 squared, all divided by 144, goes to x minus 1 squared over 16. Right. Then if you divide this side by 144, you're going to get y plus 2 squared divided by 9. You're just reducing down the 9 over 144, just reduces down to 1 16th, and the 16 over 144 just reduces down to 1 9th, is equal to 1. Everybody see that? So from the blue line to the red line, we're just dividing everything on both sides there by 144, and then and simplifying. And now we have our standard form. So the center would be 1 comma negative 2. The vertices, all right, so this would have a vertical major axis or a horizontal major axis. Well, since 16 is larger than 9 and 16 is under the x squared, it has a horizontal major axis, right? So to get to the vertices, we're going to add square root of 16, which is 4. We're going to add and subtract 4 to the 1 part, to the x part of our center. 5 comma negative 2 and negative 3 comma negative 2. All right, so what's left to figure out? All right, the, the uh, foci. So we're going to find c. Right. c squared is equal to the bigger number minus the smaller number, to 7. And that implies, then, that c equal to the square root of 7. So the foci, all right, and again, the foci are going to be on the major axis. So we're adding and subtracting it to the x part of our center here. So the foci are 1 plus the square root of 7 comma negative 2 and 1 minus the square root of 7, comma negative 2. All right, so that's it on the study of ellipses. The next conic section is the hyperbola. Uh, so make sure you check out the, uh, the next video. Study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.